Welcome back to the channel. In recent decades, the battle for control over digital document formats has profoundly impacted how we work, communicate, and preserve data. This video tells the story of the challenge to proprietary formats, starting with OpenOffice.org and the ODF format, passing through the controversy surrounding Microsoft's OOXML, and looking toward future prospects. In 2000, Sun Microsystems acquired StarOffice, a suite of Office applications originally developed in the 1990s in Germany by Marco Burries. Burries founded Star Division at just 16 years old, aiming to create an affordable alternative to the expensive Office software available at the time. From this foundation, OpenOffice.org was born, an open source project designed to provide a free alternative to Microsoft Office. The original logo of OpenOffice.org, a flying seagull, was created by a community of volunteers led by Bruce Byfield. The seagull symbolized freedom and openness, and the logo was selected through a competition that attracted thousands of submissions worldwide. One of OpenOffice.org's key innovations was the introduction of the Open Document Format, ODF. Developed in collaboration with OASIS, Organization for the Advancement of Structured Information Standards, ODF was designed to be open, transparent, and interoperable. In 2006, ODF was recognized as an ISO standard, ISO IEC 26300, marking a historic victory for the open source movement. The approval process involved extensive technical and political discussions within OASIS and ISO, requiring years of work to ensure the format's true interoperability and suitability for various sectors. Key proponents included Sun Microsystems and other tech companies, as well as European governments seeking to reduce reliance on proprietary formats. Microsoft responded with the Office Open XML, OOXML format, introduced alongside Microsoft Office 2007. OOXML aimed to maintain Microsoft's dominance over document formats, but its path to standardization was controversial. In 2008, OOXML was approved as an ISO standard, but the process sparked controversy. Several national committees accused Microsoft of undue influence. For example, in Sweden, it emerged that Microsoft had offered financial incentives to certain companies to sway the vote in favor of OOXML, leading to an official investigation and the temporary withdrawal of Sweden's vote. Despite these controversies, Microsoft continued to promote OOXML, which remains the default format for Office. ODF and OOXML represented two opposing visions. ODF, an open cross-platform format supported by LibreOffice, OpenOffice.org, Calligra Suite, WPS Office, OnlyOffice, and Google Docs, as well as being integrated into many business applications and systems. OOXML, a proprietary format, initially less compatible with other platforms, but deeply integrated into Microsoft's ecosystem. Many governments, particularly in Europe, began to favor ODF to ensure transparency and accessibility of public documents. Countries like Norway and Belgium were among the first to mandate the use of ODF in public administration. After Sun Microsystems was acquired by Oracle in 2010, the open source community feared for the future of OpenOffice.org. Oracle initially maintained the project, but a lack of dialogue with the community led to the fork and the birth of LibreOffice. This gave rise to LibreOffice, a fork supported by the Document Foundation. LibreOffice continued the development of ODF, incorporating improvements and new features. LibreOffice rapidly gained traction with a vibrant community and organized structure, becoming the natural successor to OpenOffice.org. At the same time, Oracle's decision to donate OpenOffice.org to the Apache Software Foundation in 2011 sparked mixed reactions. While some saw it as a potential new beginning, others viewed it as a spiteful gesture against LibreOffice's success. Initial development of the Apache OpenOffice project was slow, with minimal contributions compared to LibreOffice. Reports indicated that only a fraction of OpenOffice's former contributors joined the Apache effort, while LibreOffice attracted hundreds of new developers within its first year. Additionally, licensing differences created further divergence. LibreOffice adopted a dual license under the Mozilla Public License and the new Lesser General Public License, LGPLv3, promoting a copyleft approach that encouraged community collaboration. By contrast, Apache OpenOffice's permissive license allowed proprietary forks, which some developers and contributors found less appealing. LibreOffice's active community 
and rapid pace of innovation soon left Apache OpenOffice trailing behind. For example, LibreOffice's February 2011 release introduced significant enhancements and outpaced OpenOffice.org in features and performance. LibreOffice continued the development of ODF, incorporating improvements and new features. Key innovations included a better graphics rendering engine, performance optimizations for handling complex documents, and enhanced compatibility with Microsoft Office formats. Additionally, LibreOffice expanded user options with advanced collaboration tools and more intuitive user interfaces. The name LibreOffice was chosen to emphasize the project's commitment to freedom. LibreOffice's first logo, a document with a folded corner, was created by Christoph Nowak, a volunteer designer from the community. The divide between LibreOffice and Apache OpenOffice highlights the challenges of maintaining two projects with similar origins. LibreOffice's more vibrant community and faster development have made it the preferred choice for most users and contributors. Apache OpenOffice, despite its recognizable name and association with the Apache Software Foundation, has struggled to keep up, often releasing updates months behind LibreOffice. Furthermore, the permissive licensing of Apache OpenOffice has drawn criticism for enabling proprietary forks, such as IBM's Lotus Symphony, without significant contributions back to the community. This has led the Free Software Foundation to endorse LibreOffice over Apache OpenOffice, further solidifying its position as the primary open-source office suite. Looking ahead, LibreOffice continues to expand its user base and enhance its features, while Apache OpenOffice's future remains uncertain. Unless drastic changes occur, Apache OpenOffice risks becoming irrelevant, overshadowed by LibreOffice's progress and community support. Today, LibreOffice is the leader among open-source office suites, while ODF remains a cornerstone of interoperability. However, Microsoft Office and OOXML continue to dominate the corporate and academic sectors. Expanding ODF adoption. Future challenges include educating organizations about the benefits of open standards, competing with the advanced features of Office 365, which include real-time collaboration tools, cloud access from any device, native integration with Teams for video conferencing and chat, and AI-powered productivity enhancements such as automatic document summarization, ensuring full compatibility between open and proprietary formats. The challenge to proprietary formats is a story of innovation, conflict, and hope. Choosing open formats means promoting transparency, freedom, and technological sustainability. The future depends on the choices we make as individuals, businesses, and governments. If you believe in the importance of open standards, support projects like LibreOffice and help spread awareness about digital freedom. Thank you for watching.